Hey, everyone. Can you hear me all right? All right. So how many of you have ever been tasked with writing a report for school and your teacher says, you know, you have to get credible sources because Wikipedia is just not going to cut it. And so you say, okay, well, I'm going to check Wikipedia first. And I'm just going to get all my credible sources from there. And then I just won't reference that I used Wikipedia. So we, <laughs> nobody, no one else, no, okay. Um, so we at the Ocean Portal try and be that very accessible Wikipedia source. So. Our, our main game here, you know, we've got, we've had presenters that have talked about using memes, getting attention, being high energy. We exist because people need to get their information somewhere to write those reports, and we are the reliable source for that. So we provide the information, and we make it very easy to find. Um, you know, by providing full and accurate information from a trusted smart source, which is the Smithsonian, uh, and that is reviewed by subject matter, our pages end up surfacing extremely high on uh, YouTube, or not YouTube, Google searches. Um, so as Justin and several of our presenters have mentioned before, this is an opportunity for us to really combat fake news. Um, by having a credible source that's been reviewed, peer-reviewed by several scientists. D who knows around here um, that Smithsonian actually has a scientific, an active scientific presence that people are practicing science. That's great! That makes me so happy. We're more than just a museum. We have act active scientists who are taking this information, uh, taking a look at it, making sure that it's all um, factual and accurate. So if they Google it uh, and we have content, they come. So this graph kind of shows how quickly some of our pages rise. Um, these overview pages that I mentioned are extremely popular. Uh, ocean acidification page, our ocean acidification page was published in 2014 um, and started off as number 14 on Google search. Uh, but uh, now it's number four rising to the first page, which is very exciting. And what's more, our page detailing the ecological effects of the um, Deepwater Horizon oil spill uh, is often listed as the first piece of content on Google as well. So it is the definitive resource for understanding um, what happened and getting the exact science behind it in a way that's digestible. You know, another uh, part of this is not to dumb it down. And this is something that I like to do a lot is um, connect the science to popular culture. So The Shallows, which maybe y'all heard of, came out in 2015, it was a, 2016 rather, was a summer blockbuster. Um, it was a simple movie with uh, <laughs> a predictable ending, but it, it gave us the opportunity to explore a complicated perception of sharks and why we feel that way about them and what about their biology has led us to, to reach that place. And so we published this article it had the trailer, you know, it had Blake Lively, um, and we really took a, a look at the shark science that was, well, shark science that was presented in the film, took a hard look at it, compared it with our own shark science from our uh, scientists at the Smithsonian, and we're able to have a very complicated discussion about, about why, we, why we're scared of sharks, what their true feeding habits are, and, you know, whether or not this should mean that we're, we should be worried when we go to the beach in the summertime, right? So this was a really good opportunity to express really complicated science in a way that was accessible to people. A lot of people had seen this film. It did very well in, our, um, in, in uh, Google, so it was, a, it was a good success. So we also try and keep it interesting. Aside from being this educational source for people to go to because they have to for, you know, uh, research assignments for school, uh, we're doing is exactly what our panelists have, have uh, communicated. We're making text on screen videos, which are great for social media, and also interactive graphics. Ooh, that got covered up a little bit, but you know what that says. Um, all as an attempt to package information in ways that um, are accessible to people who might have a shorter attention span. It's okay. Um, and we bring it on a silver platter. So, you know, I mentioned a lot about Google. Just Googling something, hopefully it rises up to the top and people see it. That's, that's one way to do it. And we do a pretty good job of that, especially with our, with our overview pages. But uh, ultimately, there are two things we know for sure. Um, students need to write research papers at some point, so they're going to Google this information. And they're also likely using social media. Um, we try not to make our content hard to find. Uh, 
you know, especially on Facebook, Tumblr, and Twitter. Um, and so, again, bringing that pop culture in, we did a, a Poke, you, know, you guys remember Pokemon Go? It's kind of gone out of fat a little bit, but you know. So we, we did an actual comparative analysis of the Pokemon that exist in Pokemon Go and in the Pokemon universe and the animals that they are actually based off of. And we found some fascinating results. Um, so one of them being the uh, Nudibrink and uh, Shellos is its counterpart. And um, you know, same with the Amenonite. Uh, there were 12 uh, Pokemon in all that were all water Pokemon because we obviously would have been part of the Cerulean Gym at Ocean Partle. Um, and we put this on Tumblr, and it did quite well too, you know, because it was just another way to access uh, uh, new information, complicated ideas through this, this fun opportunity that was both very timely and um, very nostalgic for a lot of people too. Uh, we also did this with, um, this was another fun article that we did, and this was, this was an analysis of all the car, well, five of our favorite cars that were all inspired by fish. And this is the, um, this is the Stingray, which I, I assume if you've ever seen Bullet with Steve McQueen, you know about. But um, rather, that was the Mustang. I'm sorry for anyone who, who actually knows that film. But the Stingray, um, the box fish, which actually ended up being a Mercedes-Benz, it kind of looks like the element, a square car that did terribly in the market. And um, the Manta Ray, if you guys know about that car, and the, um, the oh, now I'm forgetting the last one. Emily, do you remember the last one? Okay, that's Emily, <laughs> Emily Frost in the corner there. She also works on the Ocean Portal. Um, so this also did very well because it was another way to package information in a new way that maybe you know, car lovers could enjoy and also learn about some endangered species of fish. So ultimately, we're, we're Nancy Knowlton, uh, who runs the Ocean Portal and is also the convener of this meeting, her big message is to inspire. And so that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to give good news because ultimately, the doom and gloom, as we've noticed, can only go so far, and it makes you feel very small, and it makes you feel like you can do nothing. And so that's how the Earth Optimism and Ocean Optimism hashtags actually began. It began with Ocean Optimism, and then evolved into Earth Optimism. Um, but we also really try and foster uh, uh, it, mentorship relationships with folks who use the Ocean Portal so that they, we can sort of craft what their career paths may look like. Inspiring, you know, Gen Z or even millennials to be interested in the ocean is a really big uh, priority of the Ocean Portal to sort of have the, tor the torch pass to the next generation. And of course, we do uh, invest a lot of time into communicating with teens. Uh, we have a fantastic event happening at the Natural History Museum um, tomorrow, uh, a teen only Sunday, a teen only event. Uh, we're shutting down Curious, which is our teen space for just teens to come and basically um, absorb all the amazing uh, science, conservation science that will be here at the summit. We'll have many uh, scientists also going over there on Sunday. So um, with that, uh, I'll just end with a video that we created for Ocean Optimism to inspire everybody in this room. Thanks so much for your time, everybody.